Hi guys and welcome in the next video. So in the previous two videos we spoke a little bit about KUKA robots, how to make an image backup and a regular backup on the KUKA robot. So how about today we talk about how to jog the KUKA robot. Ready? Let's get started. Alright. So those of you who are long with me on the channel, uh, you guys seen at the part how to jog the Fanuc robot. Today we're going to talk about the KUKA and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to show you how to uh, switch the robot to a T1 mode that you can move the robot. Uh, what are the precautions? What can you do in T1 mode? How you can jog the robot? What are the ways of jogging the robot? How to switch the frames? How to adjust the speed? and a little bit uh, of extra stuff that's in KUKA and we didn't have that in FANUC. Before we start, I would like to remind you, uh, some time ago I made like a safety video uh, telling you about the safety when you jog the robot. I recommend you guys watch it. Uh, there are some like events that happened to me or my friends uh, and it's a good precaution before you start playing with the robots. Uh, some stories that happened to me and my friends uh, for you guys to do not uh, have the same issues or problems while playing with the robots. So what do we do uh, with the KUKA robot? So basically KUKA robot, uh, if you're just the KUKA guy, if you don't do much of a FANUC, every robot is the same. It's going to have a teach pendant. In our case, it's called KCP. Uh, and that device is going to have a, a deadman switch behind it. The deadman switch allows us to uh, enable the drives on the robot and basically move the robot. So you want to hold the deadman switch in the middle position every time you're programming and this will allow you to move or jog the robots as well as play the programs. In today's video we're talking about jogging. So I'm going to uh, briefly explain what are the ways to jog the robot. So mainly there are two ways how we can jog the robot. We can jog axis by axis or using a Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, the Cartesian co coordinate system is used in, uh, with uh, different frames. We can use it with word frame, tool frame, uh, user frame or base frame in, in case of KUKA. But that is going to be explained on a different video. Today we'll just show you how to switch between them and how to jog in them. So you, you get an idea, you can start playing around and then uh, we go more deeply in, into that topic. So in KUKA, uh, similar like in FANUC, you gotta switch the key. In FANUC we have the key on the uh, robot cabinet, in KUKA we are having the key on the robot KCP. So you wanna switch that key and then you wanna select the T1 mode that allows you to jog the robot. So once you do it, you turn the key back and you're changing the mode. So you basically are switching the mode using the key and the combination of the buttons that you will choose. T1, T2, external, automatic. That's the first step. Second step is going to be clearing all of the faults if there are any faults. And if there is no faults, you want to hold your dead man and you will be good to go. So what are the differences uh, or what do we have in KUKA? So there are two ways how we can jog. We can use either a, a 6D mouse or we can use the keys, whichever you like, whatever you feel more comfortable with. The, the mouse is pretty cool, I won't say no, uh, but personally, I really like uh, using the keys, probably because I'm very used to uh, driving a FANUC. If you guys like use the ABB where they have joystick, maybe you'll uh, feel more comfortable with using the 6D mouse. Nothing uh, is worse or better, everything is uh, the preference, guys. So in KUKA, that's awesome because you can choose 6D mouse or the keys. In the simulator, I do not have the mouse, so I'm going to use just the keys, just so you know, but in a normal robot, you'll be able to use the mouse. Try it out, it's pretty cool. Okay, so then uh, I'm going to show you how to switch the modes. So between uh, the regular mode or using the word or other uh, coordinate system that we can jog into. And later on, I'm going to show you how we can uh, jog using an incremental uh, value. So in, in KUKA, it's pretty cool because we can move by one millimeter or one degree, 10 millimeters or 100 millimeters uh, just by a single press of a button, which it's very useful uh, if you're working on some applications like gluing or laser 
where you gotta keep a distance, a certain distance from the part, very good, cool option. So I'm going to show you how to set this, how we adjust the speed, and that'll be pretty much all from jogging, and you'll be good to go to play with your robots or with the simulator. Okay, ready? Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to the exercises. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to move the uh, KUKA robot. So first thing first, uh, the first thing you want to do is select the correct operating mode. So in our case, that is going to be uh, T1. So how you do it? You're going to turn on the key, select the operating mode, because I'm in a simulation. I'm going to click here and select T1. As you can see, there's the indication of the mode uh, shown in here, and that is going to tell you in which mode you are, depending on what you choose. If there are any errors in here, uh, you want to confirm, or you want to make sure that you have no red errors, because the red errors will prevent you from moving the robot. The other thing is, uh, you want to hold the deadman. In my case, I'm going just to hit enabling, and that is my deadman. Uh, in your case, you need to hold the deadman located in the back of the robot. What you want to look for is that eye icon in here. So that eye icon represents your drives. So when you have the uh, eye icon in that color, that means all is good. Uh, when it's off, that means the drives are not enabled and you cannot move the robot. So if you have your drives, okay, if you have no faults, if you have T1 selected, uh, Indicated in here, you are good to go. So as I said in the introduction, there are two ways uh, to move the robot. One is with using the mouse that I don't have in here. And the second one is with using the robot keys, uh, with using the uh, KCP keys located in here. So let's talk about those keys for uh, a while now. So uh, the first six keys in here are used to uh, move axis one to six or X, Y, Z, and the rotation, if you use different operating system, coordinate system, but that we'll talk about in the next video. And the last two keys in here indicates the speed. The little play button indicates the speed of uh, the program that you'll be executing, that we won't do today, and the, the hand indicates how fast you wanna jog. The speed can be seen in here, uh, the small play button indicates how fast you're going to execute the program, and the hand, the hand key is just how fast you want to jog the robot. So how do you change the speed? Simply by clicking the plus or minus in here. As you can change, see the speed is changing up here. The other way to change the speed is by clicking here and simply moving the sliders to a desired speed or using the plus or minus keys in here. Guys, up to you how you want to move it. Okay. So we have the uh, operating speed selected, we have our drives, we're holding our deadman, we can move the robot. So how do, you, do we move the robot? As I said, you can move in a joint manner or you can move using the, co using the coordinate systems. How do you select it? Simply by clicking the icon look that's in here. That icon can vary depending on what was selected before. So as you click in here, you can choose if you want to move just the robot axis, you want to uh, move using the word coordinate system, base or tool. And again, we'll talk about that later. If you're using the mouse, you want to click here and you want to select how you want to move the mouse. As you can see, it says mouse and keys, so you know what you're choosing. Okay, so let's move the robot. So we have the dead man and simply you want to just hit the plus and minus keys in here and the robot will move. So as I hit the plus, you can see the robot is moving. Axis one, minus, axis two, minus, plus, axis three, plus, minus, axis four, axis five, and the last one, axis six. Simply, simply, you wanna change the way how the robot moves, you click here, you select, for example, word, and the same, you hit plus, minus, and angles, and so on. Uh, we're not going to uh, do more, play with it, guys, uh, you can figure it out. Uh, I wanted to show you another important thing with jogging. So let's check, change back to our uh, joint movements. 
Uh, as you can see in here, there is a small uh, indicator showing like infinite sign. So as we click in here, it's called incremental jogging. That means you're able to move the KUKA robots by increments. So you can select either continuous motions or uh, you can use other predefined values in here. So when you select this one, as you can see right now, our infinite sign changed to 100 millimeters or 10 degrees. What does it mean? That means whenever you're going to hit the plus or minus button and hold it, the robot is going to move for depending either uh, 100 millimeters or 10 degrees. Degrees will be applied to the joint movement, millimeters will be applied to all others. So you will hold it, it will move for 10 degrees and then it will stop. Take a look. I'm holding it, robot is moving. After he moved for 10 degrees, he's not moving anymore even though I am holding the button. And the same will apply for any other axis. You move it, the robot will move. After it, it moves 10 degrees, it will stop. If you change it to three degrees and you remove it, the robot will move for three degrees and then stop, three degrees and then stop and so on and so on. So you wanna make uh, sure that you're in a continuous motion, of course, if you want, uh, because if you're trying to move the robot and you see it will move and stop, most likely you will have an incremental jogging enabled. And guys, uh, that will be pretty much it from uh, moving the robot. There is also uh, the indication here for selecting your tool and base frame, but that we're going to cover in the next videos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, exercise and that's all. All right, guys. And that will be all for today. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, leave your comments down below so I know what else you wanna watch. And let me know guys, uh, what do you wanna see from KUKA? More advanced videos, uh, still a little bit of uh, beginner basic videos. I'll be more than happy to answer and make a new videos for you. All right, see you in the next video. Bye bye.